How many of you have been in this situation before? You're running low on power on your power station. So you bust out the gas generator. We're gonna pretend that this uh, EcoFlow product is uh, a small Honda generator, one of those EU2200i gas generators. Because those can put out uh, 1800 running watts and uh, so can this. So you bust out your gas generator and you take the AC charging cord from your big power station. You plug it into the gas generator. It starts up and begins recharging your power station. Let me show you a problem. We have an air conditioning unit and we're hot and we need to turn this on. Watch what happens when I do. It just died. Tried to start completely overloaded and died. Why? The poor generator died and went off, shut down. So for those of you that might not know, when you plug a power station in like this Anchor F2000 through its AC cord, it switches over because it actually uses the inverter in reverse to charge the battery. So it goes into what's called pass-through mode. So it takes the power from, in our case, the uh, make-believe gas generator here, and it just passes it straight through the power station to the load. So we don't get the rated output of this inverter at all anymore because the inverter isn't even on. We're stuck with the rated output of this, which is 1800 watts. But now things are different. So I've got uh, the air conditioner hooked up here. Take a look back here. I've got the DC power coming from the uh, big battery here. And then what's awesome is included with this battery and its screen is this super nice charger. It's got weather resistance ratings to it because it's meant to be outside charging golf carts. It's a 56 volt, 18 amp charger. Again, that comes with this battery. So now watch this. I've got my make-believe gas generator here. We're gonna plug this charger into it. So that's plugged in at the same time and charging at the same time that this is charging off the DC. So if we come over here and uh, take a look, you can see that we are now discharging from the generator just under a thousand watts. So the generator is happily purring along. It's small, it's fuel efficient. We're charging up over here on our power station just fine. We're up to 50% already. We've enabled this inverter. So now watch, in this configuration, when I come start this air conditioner, watch what happens. It turns right on. Why? Because this power station with its inverter is strong enough to start a big heavy load like that. Because we're not in pass-through charging anymore, we are able to use the full power and potential of this inverter. No more overloads. The gas generator didn't even know that uh, that air conditioner started up. It's still just purring along and I'm gonna jump in here. A ton of you leave before the end of the video. So I'm appealing to those of you that like to jump ship early. Before you go, please, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those are 100% free for you to do, but really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. The rest of you that do watch the whole video to the end, thank you. And uh, you're welcome to wait until the end to do that. I'm just trying to catch uh, those of you that uh, like to jump ship early here. To be clear, this video is not sponsored or anything. Timgo did send this battery out to me uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I made uh, a full review on the battery itself. I'll leave a link uh, for it down in the description in case you're interested in, you know, how it does in capacity tests and surge testing, etc. But I've had more time to play with it. I really think for what you get, there's a huge amount of value here, regardless of sizes of power stations, from large to medium to even small. What this allows you to do is expand the capabilities of your power station in a vast and dramatic way for not very much money at all. So allow me to demonstrate. Uh, I've got multiple things uh, hooked up, uh, but notice I've got uh, a fuse right here. That is fusing this cable, and uh, this particular cable has an XT60i connector on it. Uh, you can get different ones. Uh, definitely get the ones with like 10 gauge uh, cable. That's what I've got here. But if you look back here, the Anchor F2000 is rated for up to 60 volts and 20 amps. So we're gonna simply take this cable and plug it in like that. And what's going to happen is the power station is going to recognize that as a DC power source and start charging. And there we go, look at that, over a thousand watts of input. And the secret sauce to allowing that to happen is because of the higher voltage of this battery. This is a 48 volt battery, it's a 51.2 volt nominal voltage. The other super sweet thing about this is it's got this little screen right here. So you can monitor your state of charge as well as uh, the power that's going out. So we can see that we've got 19 amps of current leaving the batteries all. So what if you want to plug solar into this in conjunction with this battery being plugged in? You only have one port available uh, for this. Well, that's where this uh, device comes in. So this particular unit right here is a 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller. So remember how this power station has a 20 amp limit on its charge controller? Well, this is a 20 amp solar charge controller. So you can simply add this to the battery here and then connect this to solar panels and it's going to dump in the same amount of power to the battery from solar as you would get charging directly into this unit here. 
But wait, it gets better. This particular charge controller can accept up to 150 volts of solar input instead of being capped at 60 like the Anker F2000 is. So you can hook more solar panels up in series, reducing the amount of wiring you need using this as opposed to feeding directly into the Anker. But it gets even better. You're maxed out at 1000 watts input on this unit. You could get like a 40 amp MPPT charge controller or get two 20 amp units or even three. And you could easily pump in say 3000 watts of electricity into this battery as opposed to being capped to 1000 watts. So this could act as a reservoir. You could pump in 3000 watts while you've got the sun shining. Then this will go ahead and consume the 1000 watts of that. The other 2000 go into this battery for charging and storage. And then this power station can draw power off the battery during the night, etc. So you're able to get a lot more solar input into this unit, connecting this battery in between. Hopefully that makes sense. And let me tell you the best part, 51.2 volts times 100 amp hours, that's over five kilowatt hours of battery storage. That is more storage than all the storage in this power station, plus an extra battery combined. This is four kilowatt hours of storage. So this actually packs one kilowatt hour more power storage wise than both of these units combined. So you're actually more than doubling capacity if you have the extra battery and this power station. This hack works with smaller power stations too. Let me show you that. Okay, this is the EcoFlow Delta 2 power station. This has roughly a one kilowatt hour battery. The storage in this battery fully charged is equal to five of these power stations combined. Just to kind of put into perspective how much power this is packing. This is good for up to 60 volts. 15 amps. The easy way I get, I remember amp volts versus amps is volts is pressure, amps is volume. You cannot over pressurize a system. So you must not exceed what the power station voltage limit is, but the power station can regulate how much volume or current it accepts. Current is pulled, not pushed like voltage is. So even though this battery can serve up to 200 amps, the power station is going to limit itself to only 15 amps max. So we're gonna simply get our cable here again, and we're gonna plug it in. And there you have it, 400 watts. So we've seen big power stations, we've seen medium size. What about little teeny ones? By way of comparison, this battery here is equivalent to 20 of the batteries inside this little guy. So we're getting real crazy now. Not all small power stations like this accept up to 60 volts, but this one does. Even this little guy is charging. Now it doesn't have as big of a charger as this one or the bigger one. And so that's why it's limiting itself to what power it's designed to put into the battery. I'm just showing you that this battery as a DC power source works across the board for any power station that can accept up to 60 volts of power because this battery is never gonna go over 60 volts. So you're starting to see how this kit can work together with things like my fake gas generator here, more solar input and make your power station be able to be more functional. I think this is awesome. Now, certainly there are limitations. This is an example right here. We've got 1,164 watts going out and 1,019 watts coming in. So technically we're consuming more power than we're putting in. But if you look here, we've got, even with just a 50% state of charge, we've got 3.6 hours of runtime at this current state. Whereas if we didn't have any input at all, this would be dead in like a half hour. So the battery inside this power station is making up the difference at this point for the heavy load. But that's okay, because what happens with air conditioning? it satisfies. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It's cooling right now, but uh, let's just change it over to fan mode just to simulate that it got up to, or got down to the temperature and the compressor cycled off. Well now look at that, our output is only 84 watts and we're putting in a thousand. So now we're putting more power in from this battery than we're taking out. So really, really nice setup. Doesn't involve modifications or anything. We're just augmenting through that DC port from this battery and then we're hooking up our solar to this battery, we're hooking up our gas generators to this battery, and this kit is all of a sudden turning this power station that was very capable into a crazy capable unit. And just a final comment on the gas generator side, if you can get it to run at a consistent speed and not have a bunch of spikes up and down, you're going to get a lot better gas mileage on it. And I'm showing you with this uh, charger that comes with the kit. You could easily get a larger charger or multiple chargers if you wanted to dump extra power in from your generator. I've got one sitting right here. This is uh, the charge inverter from EG4. Uh, you could get that and uh, hook that up onto that and really get a lot of power filled up from that and then let it just slowly feed into uh, your power station. It'd be a really cheap and fast way to really maximize the fuel economy of your generator where it only needs to run a few hours to top this battery off, shut it down, and uh, just let it uh, feed in from there to the power station.
anyway, hopefully you guys can tell I'm way excited and I've been having a ton of fun uh, playing around with these uh, configurations. Let me know what uh, other thoughts or configurations you have. Uh, that you guys always have more great ideas. So sound off in the comments, tell me your thoughts. Uh, maybe we can uh, play with this more and uh, reconfigure things. If you enjoy these kinds of videos with me just playing around and experimenting, uh, be sure and let it show and give me a like and a subscribe, a comment and a share for 100% free things for you to do, but uh, tremendously helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps me uh, continue to bring this free content without any additional financial assistance. It does take considerable time and effort to do this for you. So please do those four things for me. I would really appreciate it. We'll catch y'all next time.